This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. Me llamo Esteban. <laughs> this time we are continuing in our endeavor to build a test jig for the Index motherboard. Last time we got the pogo pin board and the actual controller that's running the test spun up and working great, but as a lot of you guys mentioned in the comments, just squishing the two boards together is not a good reliable solution for accurate repeatable tests. So this time we're gonna make the actual mechanical part of the jig that makes sure that everything is lined up real nice. There's a lot of ways to do this to make sure that your board lines up super well with your jig. Adafruit really likes using some bolts sticking out of standoffs to align their boards. Some folks will use a little milled acrylic jig or a 3D print. Some people will actually use another PCB and there's a whole bunch of other wacky solutions for aligning things. But we're gonna use this. This is an off the shelf kit for building your own bed of nails jig. We decided that designing this thing from scratch wouldn't be a good use of our time, but I'll let Lucian tell you about it. Nice. So what is this thing? We bought a PCB programmer kit. This is a plastic assemble it yourself machine. It'll like actuate a pusher into a circuit board um, holder basically. So it almost looks like a pneumatic press, but it's designed for landing like flying touch probes into a circuit board. We realized it'd be a lot cheaper and quicker to build this from a kit than to design everything from scratch. Not worry so much about this linear motion system because this is solved for 60 to $80 on the internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we literally couldn't buy the stock to make this for probably less than like 150. Yeah. Unless it was like plywood and warped. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like we could 3D print the whole thing. And we had some cool novel designs modeled for that already, but we just got to draw a line somewhere. Yep. And in the interest of like moving forward and like shipping good product, like this isn't where we needed to be creative. This is just a skeletonized version of the PCB mount. And the board goes in like that. Touch points can land on any possible uh, through hole. So this is meant to push down on a spring-loaded platen so that when you retract, it lifts up pretty easily. I see. This is pretty identical to all of the equipment I've seen used in production lines in China when mm. I've been out there. Yeah. I think a part of mid skill being scrappy and like picking to choose where you put your time. Right. right? So, because mm -hmm. you can't do everything, you're not full-fledged capable of everything. Yeah, you have to decide when do we just go with someone else's solution, something that we know is gonna work because it's been tested, if we don't need to do something custom, let's try to not, you know? Yeah, within like an hour or two, I'm gonna build up the whole thing. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Should be fun. Hell yeah, dude. After the frame was all put together, it was time to start adding our own custom parts to it. Of course, the jig that we bought is just a platform. It's not designed with any of the board specific stuff. We need to make that ourselves. So what do these parts need to do? Well, mainly they just need to make sure that the motherboard is held really, really securely and that it can be pushed into the pogo pin board really repeatably and accurately. Lucian designed a print that goes on the bottom platen that holds the motherboard in place and a carrier that goes to the bottom side of that platen that holds the controller and the Raspberry Pi. He even designed a little ejector lever to make it easier to remove the board from the jig. So we got the rider, we do all the wiring, we plug there, we plug there, we can run USB-C out, run our power, and it should be pretty reasonable. We have to install the ejector right here. Probably going to shorten that arm because I was not able to cut close enough to that PCD. Mm. Uh, I could try and get back in there and get closer, but this alone made me nervous. Yeah. Probably the next step is to take this 2D bounding region and mm. cut it into here so that the platen can pass through. Cool, man. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> this is coming together pretty good. Okay. The jig's really coming together now. We have the pogo pin board mounted correctly within the 3D print. We have the clamp actuating and putting the correct amount of pressure on the board to depress the pins and make contact with all of the test points on the back. So that seems to be pretty good. I think that's unlocked, but we're gonna move on from that and take it to the next few steps. We wanna be able to communicate the QC results from testing these boards to the customer. We recently unboxed a Prusa Mini. They actually include a receipt that shows you all these different types of test values. And we thought that was pretty cool. So the plan is to take a label printer from Adafruit and integrate it into this machine. That way, when a test is completed, we'll be able to see whether or not 
it worked right and we can show that to the customers that received the product. That'll also be great for, let's say something went wrong on this test. We would get a receipt with a big X at the top and we'll binder clip it to the board and put it in the rework pile. So we'll be able to physically see what's wrong with our board. We'll be able to physically show the customers that everything's been tested and it'll really help guarantee the result of our product. Next, what we're gonna do is design a mount for our thermal printer. We're going to install it on this guy and we'll get some of the wiring from the thermal printer running to the inside of the box. I came up with this print. What I like to do with 3D printing a lot of the time is make fixtures to make life easier. My hands are not very precise, right? So that's annoying. We need to be able to put some precise holes in the side of this body so that this will bolt up correctly. So what I've done for that is I've 3D printed a little drill fixture. It has holes exactly where the holes on this print are and it's the same width as our side piece. So what I'm gonna do is pop it on and I'll mark these two holes shown right there and then drill it. And it should be really good. I'm excited. This is gonna be awesome. Okay, the label printer is installed now and it's really not going anywhere. Mechanically, this is going really well. What's also nice is how clean the electronics came out. Everything pretty much rides on the underside of that platen. That's great for serviceability. If we wanted to update the electronics, all we have to do is pop out the 3D print and the acrylic. It all come out as one piece. Nothing's actually attached to this red brown programmer jig. It's only that platen. Everything's smart. Everything we built will come out as one piece and it'll let us service and upgrade them really fast and really easily. And it also lets us keep this jig as something that's universal. It could receive a different 3D print for a different type of board we might make in the future. And we won't have to customize the PCB programmer fixture to accommodate that. We'll just keep designing new platens. I'm super happy with it. Steven did a great job with the circuit boards. All that's left now is software, I think. And we've got to figure out the buttons. Uh, but that's a fun problem. The rest is uh, up to Steven. And with those mods made to the kit, we now have a place to put the motherboard to reliably put it in and index it so that it's easy to interface with all the pogo pins, even a lever to make it easy to pull it out after we're done with the test. It's entirely self-contained with its own computer that handles logging and running the test inside and a receipt print. Ugh and a receipt printer. So we have a printout actually tracking any issues with the board so it's much easier to know what to work on in rework and to have something to show the customer that their board passed every test. Lucian mentioned these buttons earlier and we're gonna be using one of them to actually kick the test off. We're gonna have the Raspberry Pi listening on a GPIO pin and when it sees that pin goes low, it'll start doing the whole programming procedure and checking all the pins and all that kind of stuff. I'm also working on setting up a server that's dedicated to storing production data. At the end of every test, this jig will send data over to the server using an API that I'm writing so that we can easily track and see all kinds of information. We're gonna be logging a ton of data, so we'll be able to really easily see if more errors are being caused by a certain jig and maybe a jig is defective, what failure happens more often than others to help tune our pick and place file or our reflow profile, or we can even pull up the entire testing history of a certain motherboard and see everything that that board has ever gone through. This data is gonna be incredibly helpful for optimizing the throughput on the line and making it easier to track down bugs and problems with production. It's so cool. Anyway, that's it for this one. In the next one, I'm gonna be putting all the code I've been writing for this over the past month or so onto all the computers in here. This means a binary that we're actually flashing to the motherboard being tested to make it easier to test it, the firmware that's going to the controller board, and of course the script that's running on the Raspberry Pi that handles all the logging and telling the controller what to do and all that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I want to thank this video's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay made all the boards that went into this jig, and as usual, they came out absolutely beautiful. I needed them pretty quick, but from the time that I put them in to the time that I had them in my hands at my door was under a week. They'll check through your board design before they actually accept your order so you know that you have another set of eyes looking at your design. They find all kinds of things and little bugs that I wouldn't catch just looking at the board reviewing it myself. And they've definitely saved me a lot of revisions to boards that I would've had to make otherwise if they hadn't caught them. If you're looking for a board shop, I highly recommend PCBWay. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now for my favorite tool in the world. They're called drill taps. Steven's probably mentioned these before, but this is a drill bit 
that drills a little bit of a hole, but then it starts threading. It's just a lazy person's tap. <laughs>